Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on advanced strategic financial management. In this class we will be beginning our discussion with tax implications in capital budgeting. Please write this heading in your notebooks and then I begin with the discussion in regards to tax implications in capital budgeting. All right, friends, once you have written this title, that is tax implications in capital budgeting, let me explain this clearly to you. See what happens when a company is earning profit, it will obviously have to pay tax. So imagine if a company is earning profit of 40 lakhs and tax rate is 30%, it will have a tax liability of 30% of 40 lakhs that is 12 lakhs. Now you would say sir we already know this why are you telling this again. Let me come to the point whenever the company is earning profit it is paying tax. What would happen if the company incurs a loss idea is very clear when the company is earning profit it has to pay tax when it is incurring a loss there will be savings of tax so resulting losses in your business will eventually result into tax savings in simple words if a loss arises in your business or in any project it will result into tax savings the question is why would tax savings arise this arises because income tax law permits set off and carry forward of losses. So if you have loss in a project but if the company has multiple other projects which are profitable the loss of this project can be offset against the profit of other projects and the company will now pay tax only on the net balance of taxable income which arises after this set off. In case the set off is not possible the losses are allowed to be carried forward to later years for set off against the taxable income in future. Eventually either immediately or at later stage there will be tax savings arising because of losses in the business. So let me explain this through an example to you so that you get much more clarity over here. Imagine that there is a project titled as project A and it is expected to result into a profit of 40 lakhs and as I said if the tax rate is 30% the tax liability on the company will be 30% of 40 lakhs that is rupees 12 lakhs. Now if there is another project B and that project B is expected to result into a loss of rupees 10 lakhs what will be the impact? As per income tax law one company having two separate lines of business business A and business B or you may call it project A and project B if you are talking from capital budgeting viewpoint and what is going to happen now this loss of project B will be set off against the profit from project A. So what will be the implication profit from project A is 40 lakhs you will set off the loss arising from project B that is 10 lakhs and the net taxable profit will now be only 30 lakhs. So the company will now pay tax at the rate of 30 percent not on 40 lakhs but on 30 lakhs. So look at what is happening earlier before we considered the loss of project B that is rupees uh, 10 lakhs the tax liability of the company was 12 lakhs. If I am considering the loss arising from project B the tax liability of the company got reduced to rupees 9 lakhs correct. So the reduction in the tax liability from 12 lakhs to 9 lakhs is what we call as tax savings arising because of project B in simple words because project B is expected to have a loss of rupees 10 lakhs there will be set off of this loss against the taxable income that would have been generated from project A 
and the tax liability of the company is getting reduced from 12 lakhs to 9 lakhs. In other words, it is purely because of project B that the tax liability of the company is getting reduced from 12 lakhs to 9 lakhs. We call this as an example of tax savings arising because of losses of a particular project. So, let me give you an opportunity to note down this example and with this concluding line that because of loss in project B, the income tax liability of the company will be reduced from rupees 12 lakhs to rupees 9 lakhs, which implies tax savings of rupees 3 lakhs. So, once you write down this example and this note, later what I will do is I will take you into the details of notes writing, but first I would request you to write down what is appearing on the screen. All right, friends, once you have finished writing this example along with this note, let me take you ahead with this uh, example for computation of cash flow. So, let us put our entire focus point on this project B that is expected to give loss of rupees 10 lakhs in the first year. So, you are computing NPV of project B and you have expected a loss of 10 lakhs in the first year. So, when there is a loss, the column that you write in your cash flow calculation as a profit before tax, that profit before tax will have a negative amount of 10 lakhs. But what about the tax of that year? Now, do not think that because there is a loss, the company would not pay any tax, so tax will be 0. That will be a wrong implication. That is what we have to understand over here. If there is a loss and the loss is getting set off against profits from other projects in the same year, there will be tax savings and how that tax savings will arise, I have just explained you. In our example, there will be tax savings of 3 lakhs. Therefore, with respect to project B, instead of having an outflow towards taxation, there will be savings of tax. As per the example that I have just explained you, the company would have paid 12 lakhs of tax without project B and because of presence of project B, the company is now paying tax of only 9 lakhs, correct? As per this example, therefore, if there is a tax saving arising purely because of project B, the tax column for project B will indicate a kind of inflow. Keep in your mind one thing very clear, a rupee saved is as good as a rupee earned. In other words, if you can avoid an outflow of 1 rupee, it is as good as you have generated that cash flow of 1 rupee. So, in this example, how much tax outflow we are going to avoid? We are going to avoid a tax outflow of 3 lakhs. So, in the tax column, there will be no positive amount indicating tax payable. There will be no chance of writing tax column as 0 for that year because tax liability is not 0. In fact, you are having savings of tax. So, within the tax column, you will write tax with a negative amount and that will be negative 3 lakhs. So, what will be the implication? Your loss before tax was 10 lakhs because of tax savings, the loss after tax will be 7 lakhs. So, when we take up bigger examples, I will show this in details to you and that we will be definitely taking up in examples ahead. Now, this was about setting off the loss of a project or a business against the profit of other businesses or projects in the same year. Now, there is a point, what if in this example, where project B is expected to give you a loss of rupees 10 lakhs, what if, what if there is no project A, project A eliminated from view, imagine that the company is starting its business and its very first business line is project B. 
so this may happen in cases of newly started companies so if it's a newly started company and having loss arising in project b in the very first year it has no other sources of income no other taxable profits against which this loss can be set off here income tax law allows the company to carry forward the loss and set off that loss later from the taxable profit of later years so there will be still tax savings but not in the same year the tax savings will arise at later years now in situations like this your tax saving is not happening in that year so if project b is the only project and the profit before tax is indicated as negative 10 lakhs the tax column will be filled up by writing zero for the first year the tax for the first year will be zero why zero here you will not record tax savings because tax saving is not happening immediately tax savings will happen but only when the set off takes place only when there is setting off of loss of your project against the taxable profits then only you will save tax in such situation because tax saving is not happening immediately the tax column cannot indicate that tax savings in first year tax savings will be indicated when the loss is being carried forward and set off at later years against some taxable profits so as i said when we deal with bigger examples we will get much more clarity about this and uh, before we take up those big examples let me do one thing let me give you some notes over here in details so please write under the head tax implications in capital budgeting keep writing this uh, explanation along with the required examples whenever the company earns profit it will have to pay tax however when the company incurs loss it will save tax because of such loss losses arising in business will lead to tax savings and that is because income tax law permits set off and carry forward of losses suppose the company is handling two different projects that is project a and project b in project a there is profit of rupees 40 lakhs tax rate is 30% therefore tax liability from project a will be 30% of 40 lakhs that is rupees 12 lakhs so this is exactly the same example that i have made you write earlier but anyway i would want you to write up this whole thing in a detailed explanatory form the way as it appears on the screen so i'm giving you time quickly take note of this and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing these points let us move ahead and continue writing further let us suppose that the company incurred a loss in project b such loss is rupees 10 lakhs income tax law permits setting off of this loss of rupees 10 lakhs from project b against the profit from project a as a result the tax liability of the company will now be revised to 40 lakhs minus 10 lakhs that will be 30 lakhs into 30% and that would give you rupees 9 lakhs because of loss in project b the income tax liability of the company will be reduced from rupees 12 lakhs to rupees 9 lakhs which implies tax savings of rupees 3 lakhs the loss in project b that is rupees 10 lakhs has resulted into tax savings of 10 lakhs into 30% that is rupees 3 lakhs so please write up these explanatory points and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing these points let us move ahead and continue writing further suppose a company is having a single project and in such project a loss arises which could not be set off against available profit then income tax law allows carry forward of such losses to later years later on when the company starts earning profit the brought forward losses from previous years will be allowed to be set off against the profit earned 
and the company will pay tax only on the remainder profit after setting off the brought forward losses. Under income tax law, there is a specific head for gain or loss arising on capital assets. Such head of income is titled as capital gains. So, please write up these points and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue writing further. Under the head capital gains, any gain or loss arising on depreciable assets are necessarily treated as short term capital gain or loss. You should take note of one thing that even though the existence of that asset could be long term, maybe the asset has been used by the company past 5 years, but the gain or loss arising on disposal of such asset which comes under the head capital gain or loss will be treated as short term capital gain or loss. It will never be a long term capital gain or long term capital loss. It will always be short term capital gain or loss because the nature of the asset is depreciable asset. Let us uh, continue to write further. Ahead you write on depreciable assets, the difference between the sale value of the asset and the WDV of asset will be the resulting gain or loss when the asset is sold subject to application of block of assets concept. And what I am going to do is I am going to give you the details about block of asset concept little later. So, as of now you write up these couple of points and then we move ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing these points, now let me tell you one thing. In examination when you are facing a question, how would you come to know whether you have to set off the loss or you have to carry forward the loss? This is an important point. Now see what happens. There will be hints given in the question. For example, if I say X limited, comma, a newly started company, immediately you get an implication that it is a newly started company, not an existing one. So, the project that it got initiated with could be the first line of business. There will be no possibility of setting off that loss the loss will have to be carried forward that will be the implication. Sometimes question may initiate the line this way X limited an existing and highly profitable company. Few words changed here and there the entire implication will change. So, if X limited is an existing and highly profitable company and it is about to start up a new project that means company is not new project is new correct company is not new project is new if the project is new and there is a loss arising in that project that loss can be set off against the profit of other projects or other businesses and there the set off will happen in the same year carry forward will not arise so in order to have clear understanding about this whole concept let us begin with Question number 6. Let us read this question. NJ Limited is planning to start up a project with an initial outlay of rupees 1 crore 25 lakhs. The project has life of 10 years and the residual value of assets at end of its life is expected to be rupees 10 lakhs. The depreciation rate as per tax law is 20% per annum on WDV basis. Tax rate is 40%. The company targets minimum rate of return of 10 percent per annum. The following profit before depreciation and tax that is PBDT are expected to arise from the project. They have given for year 1 and 2 rupees 10 lakhs per annum, 3 and 4 it is rupees 20 lakhs per annum, 5 to 7 it is rupees 30 lakhs per annum and 8 to 10 it is rupees 40 lakhs per annum. 
you are required to advise NJ Limited whether it should start up this project based on the following assumptions. Number one, NJ Limited is existing and highly profitable company. And assumption number two is NJ Limited is a newly started company. So the manner in which we have discussed the whole concept of tax implications in capital budgeting, you find exactly similar kind of scenario now coming up in front of you. So solving this question will not be a big deal if you have understood the matter. So let us deal with the first assumption. NJ Limited is existing and highly profitable company and write up the first heading over here as calculation of annual cash flows and PV of annual cash flows. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this heading, please carefully understand this entire table. This will be a little big table. I have just indicated part of it so that uh, you do not make a mess in your notebook. I would say after this ACF column, there will be two more columns, one for writing the PV factors and another one will be for writing the PV of annual cash flows. I am going to display that part little later. But first what I want you all to do is uh, focus on this initial part of this table. For 10 years, the profit before depreciation and tax that is PBDT are given to you. Now in regards to depreciation, depreciation is charged on WDV basis. So the depreciation rate is 20% uh, per annum and the initial cost of the project assets was 1 crore 25 lakhs. So each year's depreciation when you compute through WDV basis, you will get all these amounts of depreciation. Do not forget to take the total of depreciation column that is important. Then from profit before depreciation and tax when you subtract depreciation you get profit before tax and look at one thing the profit before tax is a negative amount over here. In other words the depreciation has remained unabsorbed to the extent of 15 lakhs. So basically income tax law allows this loss to be set off against other sources of income or if there is no set off possible the loss can be carried forward. You cannot ignore this loss correct. This loss will bring in a benefit in the form of tax savings. Tax savings can be made immediately if the set off can happen immediately. In case of carry forward the benefit gets postponed. Let us look into what is this particular scenario. In this scenario if you remember we have assumed that NJ Limited is an existing and highly profitable company. This entire amount of loss will get set off in the same year against other projects or other business incomes. So let us focus on what happens in the second year. Second year when you subtract depreciation from the PBDT of second year you again get a loss. Now all these losses as and when they are arising they will immediately get set off because this is a case of an existing and highly profitable company. So as long as you do not have to carry forward the losses the effect of one year's loss on later years will not arise. Now look at one thing third year onward what we can clearly observe that the amount of profit before depreciation and tax is greater than the amount of depreciation. As a result from third year onward there will be profits that will arise. So profit before tax we have identified for each year. Now the most important thing is the tax column. Now please carefully pay attention because there is a loss over here. The loss is not supposed to be carried forward in this case. Why? Because this loss will be set off in the same year against other profitable businesses. Now how do we know that the company has other profitable businesses? That is the first assumption given in the question that the company is an existing and highly profitable company. That means it can absorb this entire loss. Because of this loss the overall taxable income will get reduced by 15 lakhs after setting off of this loss. 
and there will be savings of tax by 40 percent of 15 lakhs that will be 6 lakhs. Now, look at one thing a uh, tax column is indication of an outflow, but because there is saving of tax I have written this 6 lakhs of tax saved within brackets as a negative amount. So, a negative amount written in an outflow column indicates indirectly that either there is avoidance of outflow or in other words there is as good as an inflow arising over here. Same thing will happen in the second year 40 percent of this 10 lakhs will be saved as tax. Now, from the third year onward because the company is earning taxable income it will simply pay tax on all these profits and therefore, there is no complication from the third year. Keep in mind one thing all your losses as and when they have arisen they have been set off against the profit of the same year as a result there is absolutely no carry forward effect at all. Now, coming to this part the profit after tax see mathematically profit after tax is what profit before tax minus tax. So, I would say minus 15 lakhs minus negative 6 lakhs. So, that means it is minus 15 lakhs minus of minus 6 lakhs it will be giving you effect as minus 15 lakhs plus 6 lakhs which results into minus 9 lakhs. Mathematically you can think that way logically I would say the amount of loss before tax was 15 lakhs because of this the tax savings it is 6 lakhs. So, the remainder loss after tax will get reduced to 9 lakhs. In other words loss was 15 lakhs, but there was a tax saving of 6 lakhs the final adjusted loss after tax will be 9 lakhs only. Similarly, in the second year the profit after tax will be indication of a loss that is a net loss after tax adjustment amounting to 6 lakhs and thereafter from the third year there will be profits therefore, profit after tax will be a positive figure. Once you get profit after tax you need to add back the amounts of depreciation to get the annual cash flows and when you do that you find that cash flows are not negative. So, all these cash flows have been identified two more columns are yet to be presented in this table one is the column of PV factor and another will be the present value of these annual cash flows. So, just make sure that you have given enough space for those two additional columns I will give you sufficient time to write down this entire working and then little more time for writing up those two additional columns. So, please start noting this whole thing one by one. All right friends once you have completed writing this much calculation let me take you ahead and now what we have to do is we have to plot the present value factors at 10 percent and compute the present value of annual cash flows. Now, this is just more of a formality for you you know how to do it. So, present value of annual cash flows when you total it up what you get is rupees 1 crore 20 lakh 78,008. So, please write up this last two columns and then I take you ahead. All right friends once you have completed writing this entire calculation let us move ahead and now we make one another very important working that is calculation of terminal cash flow. Terminal cash flow mainly arises because of the salvage value or scrap value, but notice one thing what would happen with the tax effect the estimated sale value of the projects assets it is given as rupees 10 lakhs, but 10 lakhs is not the WDV of the projects assets the WDV of the project at end of life will be the initial cost at which the assets were acquired minus the accumulated depreciation over its entire life. So, the WDV of the asset is 13,42,178 and these assets are expected to be sold out at just 10 lakhs this will result into a loss and you should know one thing very well because these are depreciable assets the nature of this loss will be short term capital loss and short term capital loss is subject to the usual rate of tax. 
in fact this loss will be set off against the taxable income of that same year so there'll be some tax savings on this short term capital loss and that would be 40% of the amount of loss so tax savings will be 1,36,871 this will be a tax saved and this will be the scrap value that you are expecting to realize so total cash flow that you will get on termination will be aggregate of the scrap value plus tax saved on that short term capital loss aggregate of these come to rupees 11,36,871 so please write up this entire calculation and then I take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing this entire working let us move ahead and now compute the NPV so the present value of annual cash flows 1 crore 20 lakh 78,008 to this we add the present value of terminal cash flow the terminal cash flow we have computed in the earlier working and this is the present value factor for the last year because of course terminal cash flow you'll be getting at end of the project life aggregate of these two present values will give you the total present value of inflows from that you subtract the total present value of outflows and you get the resulting net present value which is positive so please write up this entire calculation and that will be end of the first assumption all right friends once you have completed writing this part of the calculation let us move ahead the question is not yet completed we have to deal with the second assumption that NJ limited is a newly started company now this is the assumption and within this assumption the first calculation will be calculation of annual cash flows and present value of annual cash flows the workings will be same but the tax implications will be different because of the change of assumption so quickly write up this heading I am waiting for you all right friends once you have written this heading we go ahead and start preparing the table for computing the annual cash flows and present value of annual cash flows now the initial few columns will be just in the same way as they have been worked out earlier PBDT will remain same even depreciation amounts will remain same and even the profit before tax will remain same however change will start from the tax column now look at one thing here we are taking an assumption that this is a newly started company so it is implied that this is their first ever project that they have started as a result in the very first year if you are having a loss because of unabsorbed depreciation amounting to rupees 15 lakhs you don't have any other income to set off this loss the only thing what you can do is carry forward this loss to be set off against the taxable income that will arise in future so what happens to tax of the first year tax for the first year will be nil 15 lakhs of loss has got carried forward from year 1 to year 2 and look at what is happening further there is a loss of 10 lakhs in second year so the loss gets accumulated to 15 plus 10 25 lakhs it will still be carried forward and the tax for second year will still remain nil now from the third year we see that there is taxable income before tax this taxable income will be eligible or can be utilized for the set off of the brought forward loss the amount of loss that was brought forward that was 25 lakhs so parallelly what I would suggest you to do is on your calculator please input 25 lakhs even I have done the same from 25 lakhs of brought forward loss 4 lakhs got set off so I am subtracting 4 lakhs and what remains on my calculator is 21 lakhs I don't have to write 21 lakhs anywhere in this working but the tax for this third year will still be nil then in the fourth year you have taxable income of 7 lakh 20 thousand the further brought forward loss which was 21 lakhs against that I am further subtracting 7 lakh 20 thousand because to the extent of 7 lakh 20 thousand the loss will get set off so again for the fourth year the tax will be nil and then in the fifth year 
the balance of the brought forward loss from fourth year it was 13 lakh 80 thousand which is currently appearing on my calculator make sure that you also get that 13 lakh 80 thousand but look at one thing fifth year the taxable income is 19 lakh 76 thousand which is greater than the amount of brought forward loss so not only that the entire amount of brought forward loss will get set off in fact there will be still some taxable income which will be left over after set off and it will be subject to tax so if i subtract 13 lakh 80 thousand from this so what i get is 5 lakh 96 thousand and on 5 lakh 96 thousand you will charge 40 percent tax that will be the tax outflow starting from the fifth year now by five years time all your losses got set off so from sixth year whatever profit you are earning before tax on that you will start charging 40 percent tax so sixth year onward the calculations will be as usual now profit before tax minus tax will give you profit after tax profit before tax if it is minus 15 lakhs nothing adjusted on account of tax profit after tax will remain minus 15 lakhs then minus 10 lakhs and then profits in positive figures from the third year onward to compute annual cash flows you simply add back the depreciation and you will be getting the amounts of annual cash flows i have been telling you that we have two more columns to be plotted over here that will be the pv factor column and the pv of annual cash flows but before i show those things on the screen i want you to write up this much keeping two vacant columns after annual cash flows so please write up this whole thing and then i take you ahead all right friends i'm sure you have completed writing this much let us move ahead and now we plot the pv factors and the computation of present value of annual cash flows will be followed so the calculation approach is same what we did earlier the only difference now is this present value will get affected you know for an experimentation if you want you can add up all these annual cash flows of this assumption and previous assumption the annual cash flow amounts will be same in both cases but look at one thing huh? for the first five years the timing of annual cash flows are little different because some more cash flow amount will arise in the initial years if it is the previous assumption as a result because of the alteration in the timing of the cash flows you will find that the present value gets affected the overall present value of annual cash flows will be different so please write up these last two columns and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing these calculations let us move ahead and uh, we compute the terminal cash flow now the working note for the terminal cash flow will be exactly the same because at end of the project life the company would have been an existing and highly profitable company even if it is newly started now after 10 years it will not be a newly started company right 10 years is a big long time so the treatment of the capital loss arising and the terminal cash flow amount will be exactly same under this assumption as well so i would recommend you just write the heading terminal cash flow and you write this amount directly and you can give reference to the same working what you have done earlier you need not duplicate the whole calculation so quickly take note of just the heading the amount what is arising over here the final amount and the resulting reference note mentioning that same as in assumption number one write it quickly so that from here i can take you ahead written so let us move ahead and make up the last calculation that will be calculation of NPV the present value of annual cash flow we have obtained from the earlier working the present value of terminal cash flow 
aggregate of the two and from that aggregate which is the total PV of inflow you subtract the total PV of outflow and you find that the NPV goes negative. Look at one thing, huh? same project, same expected rate of return, but because of the status of the company and the tax implications, the project in one case is a profitable one giving a positive NPV, in other case it is a loss making one giving a negative NPV. So please write up this whole thing and that will be end of the solution.